back to the channel, guys. I'm so excited to announce my partnership with Working In. Working In is the largest immigration company here in New Zealand. And now when you come into my community, full service, everything you need from thriving in life, meeting people that are moving here, you know, getting a job, getting a visa, everything is full service. I'm going to show you how to do that. I have Paul from Working In on today, going to talk about all those types of things with you. And I'm just really excited to announce this partnership because I it's just it's your best option, your best pathway to get to New Zealand and make moving here a reality. If you're considering a move here, you can start with my free masterclass. It's in the description. That's a great place to start. Otherwise, just come into my community. We're here to help you. We can get you all set up and everything taken care of and just really kind of figure out if this makes sense for you. I'm so excited for you to meet Paul and working in. So here we go. Okay, welcome, Paul. Thank you for joining us today. Um, this is Paul from Working In, and he is going to give us lots of insight and some secret sauces on how to get visas, how to get jobs, how to really make your move to New Zealand happen. And I'm very excited about this, guys, because uh, we have created a partnership because of the way that immigration has changed and how you need to get a job with accredited employer and the visa and all of this kind of all has to happen to actually move here. Um, we've created this partnership that I think is going to be amazing and that I think will really give you guys the most amazing value and process into doing a huge, really big change in your life. Uh, <clears throat> so the process is going to be this. So you guys are going to come into my community and I'm going to get you set up with Paul and working in and uh, getting your whole visa job situation, that pathway going at the same time. Um, working with me and helping you set up your life and getting sorted and starting to thrive and just kind of dealing with all of the the mental and emotional parts of moving to New Zealand. So I'm very excited about this. So I thought I'd bring Paul on today and talk a little bit about answering all the questions that he would be way better at answering than me <laughs> um, about how to move to New Zealand. So welcome, Paul. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Tara. I know it's it's awesome to be here. I know you and I have been talking for a few weeks now and um, it's great to finally be at this point I mean we we've helped um, quite a lot of people from the US move to New Zealand we'd love to help more people and so when this opportunity arose it just seemed like the perfect fit so yeah absolutely keen to share share tips and advice with okay you. that's great and just so you guys know Paul's story because you're probably hearing the accent like he's from the UK but you've lived in New Zealand for quite a few years but you're yeah, so just maybe tell a little bit of your story, just so people know. Yeah, so um, I moved to New Zealand back in 2003 with my family. Um, my son was three, my daughter was 10, was my wife and the dogs, and <laughs> we did the whole thing. It was a bit different, our move. Um, the BBC got involved, and they made a whole TV documentary. Oh, really? Um, I didn't even yeah, know yeah, this. Yeah, it's on YouTube somewhere. If you... Oh, I'm finding <laughs> it. You know I'm looking that up. So yeah, about five million people watched it. I think in the UK, it was it was okay, guys. Was I'm linking that in the description. It I was have pretty big, and it was a complete surprise. We didn't know it was happening. They they said they were gonna ask us some questions because they were doing a documentary, and we we'd have we'd said, oh, we're moving, and yeah, they bowled in with a, a film crew and said we were flying in two weeks' time. So extremely <laughs> stressful, but it made great TV. <laughs> I don't advise that anybody moves that way, by the way. Yeah, it's not oh, the okay. Way. No, fair enough. Okay, so but they yeah, videotaped your whole move. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then they came back out six months later and did a second uh, documentary six months later, and then I wrote a book all about it and got that published, and and, uh, and I didn't the, know whole journey, the whole journey began, and that was 20, 20 years ago, and we lived in New Zealand for 17 years. Uh, absolutely loved the place, obviously. Um Currently, I'm based in the UK because I got offered the chance to run the UK side of the business and my kids have grown up in New Zealand. They wanted to travel a bit, but obviously we can go back to New Zealand whenever right. we want, which is awesome, you know. Right. And that's a big yeah. thing. And I talked about that last week. Um, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here um, about how like getting your permanent residency doesn't mean you have to live there permanently. It just gives you options, which is really what Paul said not uh, to quote him in a conversation that we've had before. I'm not trying to plagiarize your ideas, but um, yeah. there it was just really good. And it just really uh, was really thoughtful. And um, that was helpful. Um, okay, cool. So you've lived in New Zealand, you're living in the UK, and you're helping other people move there. And so I've teamed up with uh, Working In because um, 
I'm bringing kind of the whole U.S. market uh, into bringing people into New Zealand. And I'm just telling you guys, like, Paul is so great. And this company is so great in terms of what they can offer you. And they kind of have like the full spectrum of services and that are included when you do a visa process with them. So let me just walk through with you guys like what the process is. So you basically come in the community, you fill out a free assessment so that they can figure out you know, what's the best pathway for you to New Zealand and if it's even possible, because nobody's going to waste your time and um, <laughs> giving you false hope that you can come here if you can't, because there is, you know, rules and regulations. And it's not the easiest country to get in, to be honest, um, as I've talked about many times. And then um, you will um, then go into a more, if it works out, then you'll go into a more detailed assessment and then moving on to getting jobs and visas. So, Paul, can you just tell us a little bit about kind of that part of the process and like what really is the benefit of working with you in terms of getting a job and getting a visa? Yeah, I think most of your community, you know, um, you're giving them all this excellent advice and support and they'll they'll have realized very quickly that New Zealand is a job based immigration system. Mm -hmm. 99% of the people who want to move, you, you need a job offer to get a visa. And then if you look online, all the job offers say you need a visa to apply for this job. It's this catch 22 and most right. visa agents. Yeah. And, it, and it's a massive hurdle. It is the biggest hurdle in the journey. Now, most visa agents do visas. I know that sounds obvious, but what I mean by that is that's all they do, you know, and working in is a little bit different because working in wasn't set up 20 odd years ago to do visas. Working in was set up to help New Zealand employers hire people from overseas and we were doing oh, that for really a long okay time. yeah we were doing that for a long time i was flying all over the world we're working in and we'd put these events on all over the world and we'd fly employers over from new zealand and we'd get skilled people to these events in different countries the employers would offer these people jobs great win-win for everybody but of course what starts to happen is the employer offers the jobs the people they've offered to don't move because they don't know what they're doing. They're taking too long. Right. Their visa gets declined. The employer says, hang on, that wasn't as good as we thought it was. We realized quite quickly the only way this really works is if we're handling the visa. Because if we handle the visa, mm. we can remove the risk for the employer as well as remove the risk for the person who's making the move. You mm. need that piece in the middle. And getting a job offer is all about removing risk for the employer. And that's what people miss, you know, my, one tip or one tip early on in this call. Ooh, that's good. Uh, that's good. Is your CV. So if you send a CV or a resume to an employer in New Zealand, great. It tells the employer that you can do the job. It doesn't show the employer if, when and how you're getting to New Zealand, if they offer you a job. Your CV on its own is not enough. The employer wants certainty. They, they're not, they aren't struggling that much to get people that there's no one applying for these jobs you know some people right. go like oh my occupation's on this shortage list that means that there's no one applying no there are hundreds of people applying for that job you know you are in competition with new zealanders you're in competition with everyone else around the world employers will go the path of least resistance they'll right. they'll hire a new zealander first because that's easier and they should you know if they're the right fit but if they can't find a new zealander they'll hire the person from overseas where they know it's all going to work and everything's okay. And you have to be able to prove to employers that everything's going to be okay. And if you can't do that, why would they talk to you? This is why sending off CVs on their own generally doesn't work. Oh my gosh. That's what everybody does. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone does that. And it's just like, yeah. And you know that there's this catch 22 and I'm, you know, I'm not allowed to get immigration advice. I'm not allowed to do all of that. And what's great about you guys is um, you work with the accredited because now immigration requires an accredited, you know, employer, but you mm. work with them and have yeah. lots of relationships because that's how you started. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you've touched on something really important there, Tyra. Accreditation is a massive change to immigration policy. Mm -hmm. And that means is only employers who've got permission to hire people from overseas can actually 
offer jobs to people from overseas. Okay. They have to prove that they're a good employer and that they're meeting all the criteria. They have to prove that the jobs they're offering are also meeting the criteria, which is great. It protects the person who's moving, mm -hmm. but they can be difficult to find because there isn't a list <laughs> of accredited employers. Um, and it's not the only change to immigration policy. There, we have seen the biggest changes to immigration policy in the last two years that I've seen in over 20 years of doing this work. Oh, you know, really? Absolutely. Immigration oh. policy has been flipped on its head since COVID. And the problem with the internet is all the old information's on the internet. Right. And as well as the new information. And then there's information always that isn't on there. And so if people watching this are using the internet as their only resource to figure right. out how to move they are running a massive risk now, much bigger risk than they were running two or three years ago. Two or three years ago, they got immigration policy that had pretty much been set in place for five, 10 years right. or whatever. And it was wanted. pretty easy. They could even just do it from yeah. the website. But now I'm finding it. This is why I've teamed up with you guys, because like you can't actually get a oh. job, get an actual visa without some um, immigration yeah. support. Yeah. So for most people, I mean, look, it's not it's not all bad news either. I mean, there's now oh, yeah. three three routes to residency where there was only pretty much one for a skilled right. migrant you know right um so there's there's different types of visas now there's there's different rules around what the family can do on those visas what your partner can and can't do what your children it's oh it's so complicated to, every time got, I, you guys, I still don't know the answer <laughs> <laughs> because and every situation is different like i can't just say a blanket if you you can move to do this you can move to do that you can't do that it's so frustrating yeah, every every move is is different. Every individual. I was saying to you earlier. Now we we have different different costings, different budgets that we have to talk about with people depending on what their move is. There isn't just a oh that's how you do it. This is how much it costs, and that fits everybody. Everything is different, and mm -hmm. and it has to fit you as an individual. This this move is life changing. You know, you've done it. I've done it. You know, and and we've helped thousands of people do it along the way. This is. You're changing jobs, you're changing schools, you're changing careers, you're changing country. These are the most stressful things you'll ever do in your life individually. You're doing right. them all together, all at the same time, you know. Right. And, right. you know, we're, we're constantly aware of that. This, you know, the business that, that we're in is not, you know, you know, and I'm not, I'm not you know, downgrading or, or saying anything about, say, selling cars or whatever, but it's it's a very different business. You're, you're dealing with people's lives. You're literally changing their lives and there's a massive buzz and a reward when you see them change their life positively mm -hmm. but there's also some massive risks involved and people say to me what does an immigration advisor do mm -hmm. no I can't I can't talk for every advisor but what I can tell you what we do at working in is we minimize your risks and we maximize your opportunities that's mm -hmm. what we do visas are a byproduct of that <laughs> but that's the aim minimize your risks maximize your opportunities so you can actually make this happen right it's not easy so when people no. come to you like what so they come to you and like do you focus on do you get the visa i'm always saying like you kind of got to run with the visa and getting the job at the same time like how do you generally recommend and how do you guys work with a client yeah no we we actually we break the move down into steps a lot mm. of the the main issue that people have with new zealand especially in the early days is they actually can't figure out where to start because they know they need a job offer to get a visa and as i said they see this catch 22 so they make this kind of logical assumption of well i can't do anything with the visa because i haven't got a job so right. the first thing i need to do is get a job that's the biggest mistake you can make. <laughs> mm. Mm. You, you've actually jumped to step two and you've missed step one. And if you miss step one, you're not getting to step two. And step one of the move for us is obviously, as you touched on earlier, getting clarity first around what your actual visa options are, because you could have multiple right. options. And okay. if you have multiple options, which option is the best? You might have a plan A, and a plan B and a plan C. Mm. You've got to get that clarified. But the first step in the move, once you've got your clarity, is getting ready for the move. And that doesn't mean, you know, looking at pictures of these beautiful scenery in New Zealand, watching right. Lord of the Rings and saying, that's it, that's where I'm going. You know, <laughs> um, we've all done that. But, Absolutely. you know, that's part of that. that. That is part of getting ready. That's that is part of getting ready. Yeah, but getting excited. Yep. 
the real key to getting ready for the move, and this is something that people can't do on their own. You need to be information ready. In other words, you need all the information that you need about your move, not somebody else's move. You mm -hmm. need personalized information. Internet mm -hmm. doesn't give you that. Right. You need to be document. You need to be document ready, which is what you were talking on. You need to have the paperwork you're going to need to get your visas, and you need that prepared, ideally before you start talking to employers, because you need to be able to prove to any potential employer that you're fully prepared, your documents are in place, everything's good to go, and if they offer you a totally. job, a visa, too yes. quickly. Yes, that's oh my God. that's the first step. You can't do that on your own. Yeah, and I have so many people in my community are like, I just applied for like 10,000 jobs and I can't get anything because they're not doing it. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, cool. That's helpful. That's really great. Yeah, and what I mean by you can't do it on your own is you could tell an employer that you're fully prepared and ready to move. Mm. That doesn't mean anything to an employer. That, that's, that just means you're keen. <laughs> it's not proof. It's not right. proof. You need proof. The only way you can get proof is by using a third party to prove that you're uh, actually okay. ready. To you move. can say, yes, we can verify that they can get a visa, we that they can hear that their say, paperwork, okay, that they fall, they fall into this pathway. Okay, cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. That's really great. Okay. I see. So you first figure out what visa makes sense, then work on the job offer, and then go through all the final paperwork. Yeah. So so we 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 figure out which visa makes sense, and that's through a free assessment form that people fill out and even a free 15 minute call with one mm -hmm. of our team um and they'll 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 get some clarity if that all looks good so this is stepping people yeah. like i say removing the risks each step before they even spend anything you know and then if everything looks good we do an assessment a proper full assessment with an immigration advisor and a report and that involves a 45 minute one hour consultation where somebody like me will go through everything in that move at yeah. the end of that call and guys, I've seen call. that assessment and it's amazing because it actually outlines like specifically what your skills for this particular um, pathway and like, it's really, really good. Like it's, yeah, yeah. that's really good. Yeah, yeah. And, but the, the important part of the assessment is actually the Zoom consultation because that's where you get all the answers to your questions and you get a clear way forward that's personalized to you and your move and what you're mm. doing. The timeframes, cost, budget, everything goes in that call. Um, and then we move, if they do, you know, they can take that information, go off and do it on their own, or they can, you know, move forward with us. If they move forward with us, that's where we go into step one, preparing for the move. Step two, employment support to help them get the job offer. Mm -hmm. Step three is visas. And step four is relocation and settling wow. and staying. Because you know, they're never really is... getting to that point unless it's actually possible. I mean, you can't like guarantee them a job, but, nope. you know, but you, you're you putting everything in place to you know, the best possible <laughs> Best option. possible position, best part. Yeah, the, the, the thing about getting a job offer, I've been doing this a long, long time. And you look at people who succeed and you look at people who fail. We, we even analyze that in our clients. You know, yeah. why is this client doing really well? And this oh, okay. client who's identical, not doing so well. <laughs> What's right. the difference between these two people, you know? And we've learned through through the years that, Quite often it's attitude, you know, mm. have they got the right attitude? Are, are they a positive person? Are they willing to take lots of rejections and, and no's and keep moving forward? Or are they mm. going to let that, those rejections drag them down? Mm. If they're going to let them drag them down, they're going to struggle, you know? It's yeah. the positive people with a positive attitude, people who can follow instructions, <laughs> you know? Right. And no, listen. I know, I understand that. <laughs> That's always a good one. That's always yeah. a good one. So these are the core things that we look for when we initially talk to people. You know, it's not just are they eligible for a visa, is would that person get a job offer in New Zealand? Would they come across well in an interview? Is this somebody that we is a good fit for us and we're a good fit for them? You know, because if right. it's not, then it doesn't work. You know, and that's why, you know, we're here to offer help to everybody at whatever stage they're at. And some people are moving forward now some people are moving forward six months 12 months two years doesn't matter oh yeah i get tons in my community that are just two years three years i'm going to do this but yeah but it's good to get into the process and Absolutely. would you recommend somebody like that to like start now or do you think like closer Absolutely. in or? your 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 community is is the best place to start you know i'm yeah. a massive yeah. believer in building a community where 
you can actually access the information that you need about your move when you need it. So you can pick right. the point you're at. You know, it's not somebody saying, I need you to jump to step three when you're actually in your head going, hang on, I'm I'm not even at step one yet, you know. Right. And, and communities are a great place to get the information you need and move forward at your own speed, you know, and yeah. okay. take the offers when you're ready and i think that is got to be the first point for people just to to join that and it's the best way to do it right and that's kind of how we've set it up guys is like you come into the community and you're meeting other people that are doing the same thing that you're doing in fact i just had a couple in the community that are moving to the same area and they're so they're already making friends you know kind of before they go and you know getting your questions and people there's no like there's not it's not like community jail with me so like you can come in and out i've had people come in and out. oh actually i don't think i'm going to move and then oh actually you know, six months later, they might come in. That's fine. Like it's yeah. just there for you and your support. And if you're serious about moving, we have an actual pathway to get you there if that's what you want to do. And they'll and working in will be very clear with you as to like what your pathway would be and your likelihood of getting a job and what that would look like. And and also the area of the job, because I, I talk to a lot of people about this, probably the number one question I get about getting jobs, right? Is mm -hmm. I like, for example, so like there's a shortage of teachers and so it's easier to get in like being a teacher. And then a lot, I get a lot of people that are like, well, I've been a principal for X amount of years. I don't want to go back to teaching. And, you know, but I'm like, but that might be your easiest pathway in, you know, but then on, in addition to that, and this is really why my community would help you is let me just talk you through what teaching in New Zealand is and how it's completely different than teaching in the U.S. <laughs> because their yeah. idea of why they don't want to do something is because they think it's the same and it's not. So exactly, exactly, you know, and exactly. So, and, and people are being brought to New Zealand for their skills, not for not for the skills they haven't got, the skills that they've got that they are do have, yes, in the past, you know. So, um, but there's so many routes to residence now, and some people can get residence very very quickly. And once you've got residence, you're free to do whatever you want, you know. So, right. um, it is. You're absolutely right, though. It just because you had an experience of that in your own country doesn't mean that's going to be the same in the new country. And you've also got to look at how long do you need to be doing that job. When I went to New Zealand, I knew I was going to have to do something that I wasn't going to like. And I knew I was going to have to do oh, it for two okay. years. But I did it. <laughs> right. Because it was the only way I could get in. I went, mm. oh, if that's what I need to do, cool. You know, right. it gets me to where I want to be. Right. That's and what that's I what I say. About. Like, it's not forever. That's you do it. You figure it out. You get to know people. You start developing network. You figure out where you want to live. Like, it's just like you're coming in with your ideas of what it is. And it's just your perspective is so limited that you need to just kind of come, you need to live, you need to give yourself a minute. Okay. So many Americans come in and they're like, I come in and like, do you think it'll be two weeks is enough time to set up life? And da -da -da. you know what? Yeah. You need to just take a minute. Okay. Like moving yeah. to the other side of the world. It's okay to say, give me a month, give me six weeks, give me two Absolutely. months, you know, take a minute you know, Absolutely. and they're not used to that. That's because that's not how you think in the U.S. And that's, you know, the benefit of me and in the community, because I can communicate with you based on like where your frame of reference is coming from, because honestly, the values between the U.S. and New Zealand are so opposite. And when you come here, it seems easy to set up life easy. Like this, it seems like the same, but just a little different. That's what it seems like when you come, but as you're kind of getting into the culture, getting into yeah. the culture, getting in, yeah. you're just like, oh, this is very uh, different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. It's it's not a massive, it's not a massive culture shock when you first arrive. You go, oh, right. I, can have I mean, it. you're speaking it's English, so just even with that, yeah. right? And, and this is kind of the same. And but there's there's a layer of subtle differences, and that layer is actually quite deep, and it gets deeper and deeper, and and then you realize actually this is very different overall, you know, but luckily because there's no massive culture shock, it gives you time to adjust gives you time. to the Kiwi way of life. But you, but if you're aware of that before you move, that is so much better. Oh my because goodness. I know. People aren't aware of that. <laughs> right. All. Like I was here, I've been here for eight years and like, I am still, I can't believe how much I'm still figuring out and how my clients that are in my community. I can just be like in like a very short amount of time talking weeks you know they can be up to speed on like where to buy everything da, da, da. you know like how many years it took me to figure that out and yes you can do it yourself you know 
but it's just the time value is yeah um, <laughs> oh, yeah you know the, the 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 time you can save by talking to people who've already done it or right. helped other people right. do it is is just invaluable and it, again it's an analogy i make a lot is you know if you were going to set up and establish a startup business or whatever you're going you're going to first thing you're going to work on is a business plan and the next thing you're going to do is talk to other people who are in that business or in that industry or, or related to it. That seems obvious to people who want to run a business. You need to treat the move in a similar way. You know, you're oh, changing your good. life. You're changing your life. Surround oh, yourself with people who've already done it is the best way. You want to grow a business? Talk to people who are successful in business. You want to be a successful migrant to New Zealand? Talk to people who are successful migrants to New Zealand. Get right. off the internet forums where everyone's just no, moaning about it. And they just like, and people panic, like, oh, they're saying all these bad things. And I'm like, calm down. <laughs> Do you know why they're saying those bad things? It's because they haven't settled in New Zealand. Do you want to follow their advice? Or right. do you want to follow oh, the advice good. of somebody who's actually happy? <laughs> right. Who's actually like has adjusted and has been successful yeah. and has adapted to the culture. And like so many, like <clears throat> even like Americans, like even from Wisconsin, when I first came here and like I could tell that it like they like even just knowing how to function in the workplace is so different and can be very detrimental to you if you don't know what you're doing from the beginning, because this is a very small place and everybody knows everybody. And if you start to burn bridges, <clears throat> it is really hard to get over that. And it really yeah. can hurt there, you. There's a forest fire when you burn bridges in New Zealand. It's like one person knows the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's. Yeah. You guys, it's small. Trust me, it's crazy small. I'm like, but on the flip wow. side, on the on the flip side <clears throat> of that, though, having that small community, that two degrees of separation that we've got in New Zealand, it makes it really easy to network as well. <clears throat> Networking oh, yeah, is true. the best way to get a job offer. You know, and most people don't realize that either, and they don't know how to tap into <clears throat> those New Zealand networks when they're overseas. But you can do it, and that's another thing that we guide people on. You know, tapping into networks very easy in New Zealand, you know? That's so good. Um, yeah, I think that that's so helpful. It's so clear as to what the pathway would be, excuse me. <clears throat> and I'm so excited to offer you guys like the best scenario, like get all of the support and the prep for you mentally, emotionally, and whatever in the community. Also getting, you know, your visa, your job sorted with working in, and it's a great partnership, but I'm excited. So Absolutely. thank you so much and for joining us. No, 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 no problem at all. And just, just one quick thing before we go, Tara. You yeah. know, I want to make it very clear to people in your community as well. It is very much about that. It's not us just jumping into your community and saying, you know, let's sign up as many people as we can because this is, you right. know, going to be awesome. For it, it's actually adding value, and then people who want to move forward will naturally move forward, and the people that we're a good fit and where it will just happen naturally. Right. You know, it's it's a natural process, and the value that, that your community brings to us and what we do is, you know, you know, these people, we get to know these people before they even commit to anything. Right. Because I, what I do really is really at the beginning where I say like, does this make sense for you? You know, does this, yeah. you know, do you really want to do this? Cause they have this, like, can I really leave my family? Am I going to ruin my kids? Am I going to, you know, all these big questions and they like, they've seen me do it. And so they're like, they want to talk to me and I talk to them and like, let's work through that. You know, that is kind of the first step for you to like, really think about what your goals are and what this looks really? like and what are your options. And then I can sell you all day long on the lifestyle, but if you can't actually come here, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and Not so exactly. this is why working together is going to be so good. I'm so excited to finally, like, I feel like, um, offering a service that is full. Full, every every aspect is covered everything that you need if you want to move if you want to just talk about the possibility of move like everything is there because honestly it's really just because I would have really liked to have that and now that I've been here for eight years and can see how long it took me to get to this point because immigration like you're saying was different and was more straightforward we didn't need anything more than the immigration site really to get it going because the pathways were clear now it's yeah. not possible it's not possible to do it without an immigration company. And so this is why I've done this because like, I'm very limited in what I can do because I can't give the advice. I can only do all of this other stuff. And so, um, so yeah, so I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited for you guys to be working with them as well. Please don't hesitate to ask questions, comment below, like what you would like to know. 
Paul will be around more. You'll probably see his face on the mm -hmm. channel a bit more. Um, definitely if you're in my community and um, I'll put a link to all the stuff that we talked about today. Uh, I have a free masterclass that gets you started if you're really considering the move and lots of things to think about. And anyway, so thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Tara.